This is a brief story about Lucius Howe, the first brick manufacturer in Chaska, Minnesota. Lucius was the first child of Rogers Howe and Lydia Furness. His father, Rogers Howe, was born in Vermont in 1776. Lucius was born January 13, 1801, in Jamaica, Vermont. Little is known about his early life. Sources say he was a jack of all trades. He ran a sawmill, ran a flour mill, built buildings, made brick, and farmed. Lucius married Clarissa Higgins on June 16, 1825, in Vermont. The 1850 census showed Lucius to be a fairly wealthy man. In the 1850s, numerous advertisements came out touting the new territory of Minnesota. In addition to many other things, there was land available for settlers. Around 1857, when Lucius was 56 years old, he traveled to St. Paul, Minnesota. In those days, this was fairly late in life for such a drastic move. Maybe he wanted a new start in life. A trip like that would have involved horse-drawn wagons, railroads, and steamboats. Land was available along the Minnesota River, southwest of St. Paul. Lucius settled at Chaska, a brand new town along the river. The exact details of what property he purchased are unknown. However, scant records show he owned land in several blocks in the town of Chaska, denoted by the red X's. He also owned land north of Chaska, on the southwest side of Hazeltine Lake. This is a bird's eye sketch of Chaska in 1880, which is 23 years after Lucius arrived at Chaska. It shows the spots where Lucius owned land in relation to the city square, which is still there today. In addition, it shows where his first brickyard was likely located, on the eastern edge of town. So what set Lucius into brick manufacturing in Chaska? Carver County was growing, and Chaska wanted to be the county seat. Local officials arranged to build a new brick courthouse in Chaska. There was a brickyard in Shakopee, but local brick and local contractors were always preferable. Lucius must have discovered the clay on the east side of Chaska, and had previous experience making bricks. The courthouse would require about 575,000 bricks. In addition, other sources say Lucius built himself and John Lee new homes out of the bricks he made in 1857. This is a photograph of the courthouse built in Chaska. Only the front portion was original. The red X denotes the addition that was built later. It was a fancy building. Brick manufacturing in 1857 was a tough business. Horses powered the brickyard, so they were a valued part of the team. This is not the Howe Brickyard. This photograph was taken of a different brickyard located near Zumbrota, Minnesota. It provides a great picture of the brick manufacturing essentials. Horse-powered equipment, a source of water, and a source of clay. This is a picture of a different brickyard in Kansas. This picture shows all the major components to brick manufacturing. The first arrow shows a pair of horses walking in a circle, attached to machinery that mixed the clay and water. The second arrow shows a man holding a brick mold. The mixed clay was pushed by hand into these brick molds to form each brick. The clay-filled molds were placed on a wheelbarrow, where they were hauled to a level area nearby. There the wet bricks were dumped on the ground to dry in the sun. When the bricks were completely dry, they were heated in a kiln to become stronger. The early kiln was just a wooden shelter built around the pile of dried bricks. Wood fires were started underneath the pile of bricks, which were kept burning for several days to harden the bricks. I have found no evidence that Lucius Howe made bricks from 1858 to 1862. Rather, the 1860 census listed him as a farmer. His personal wealth had dropped from $4,800 in 1850 to about $1,850 in 1860. He had used money to travel to Chaska, buy land, and establish himself. Most of the early settlers, even if they had operated stores in Chaska, also bought farms. Land was a good investment. 
Lucius got back into the brick business in 1863 at the age of 62 years. This is quite interesting, as brick manufacturing was generally a younger man's business, as it was quite labor-intensive. However, Lucius did have several sons to help him. He made bricks again until 1872. This was a profitable time for Lucius. The 1870 census showed his personal wealth had shot up to around 21,500. Chaska was growing and needed more building material. But more importantly, St. Paul needed more building material. Chaska eagerly helped supply the explosive growth that occurred around St. Paul. Lucius Howe supplied the bricks that were used to make the Metropolitan Hotel in St. Paul. This large hotel was completed in 1870. 1873 brought several personal setbacks to Lucius. His house burned down in January, and his wife died in May. He was also advancing in age himself, being about 72 years old. Lucius Howe sold his brick manufacturing business in 1873 and moved to Glencoe, Minnesota, about 28 miles due west of Chaska. Several sources say that he also purchased farms in the Glencoe area for the children who had come to Minnesota with him. For whatever reason, Lucius came back to Chaska and started brick manufacturing again in 1877. At this point, he would have been about 76 years old. He continued to make bricks until 1878. Sources say Lucius was involved in several lawsuits that cut into his personal wealth. The Chaska newspaper from 1874 and 1880 detail some of these issues. At that point, Lucius was spending most of his time back in the Glencoe area where he died on February 15, 1881. Lucius and Clarissa had 13 children. However, not all of them lived to adulthood. Emmons worked with his father in the Chaska brick business. He later moved to northeast South Dakota, where he also started a brickyard and farmed. Emmons died in 1903 in Marshall County, South Dakota. Viana married Charles Cooley in Scott County, Minnesota. She later died at Glencoe, Minnesota in 1911. Lydia married Benjamin Matthews in Massachusetts. They moved to McLeod County, Minnesota, where Lydia died in 1929. Amelia married Reuben Melvin, who worked with the Howes in the brick business. She died in 1908. Maria married Ansel Barker and later died in Chaska in 1890. She was one of the first teachers in Chaska. Rogers worked in the Chaska brick business and later farmed near Glencoe. He died in 1923. Henry also worked in the Chaska brick business and also farmed near Glencoe, Minnesota. Henry died in 1930. Thanks for listening to this recording. Check out my websites at mnbricks.com and chaskabrick.com. Thank you very much.